check and mic check is brought to you by grooving in the park an evening of reggae rhythm and blues and this morning anthony we do have an icon we do have a true music legend with us this morning go ahead and introduce our guest anthony well fresh from stellar performances globally in 2015 jamaican born jazz maestro monty alexander will play new york city's prestigious lincoln center in new york in february Alexander and his band will play the world-class venue which showcases only the best artists of today and the brightest of tomorrow. And Alexander has built a reputation exploring the worlds of American jazz, popular song, and the music of his native Jamaica. And with 70 recordings on his belt, he has performed globally with renowned artists including Dizzy Gillespie, Frank Sinatra, Ray Brown, and Mr. Tony Bennett. His collaboration spans multiple genres, styles, and generations. His project has been as varied as assisting Natalie Cole in her tribute album to her father, Nat King Cole. That was in 1991. The resulting album, Unforgettable, won seven Grammy, Grammy Awards. And he has also recorded the painted track for the film score of Clint Eastwood's Bird. In August 2000, the Jamaican government awarded Alexander the Order of Distinction for Outstanding Services to Jamaica as a worldwide music ambassador. And in 2012, Harlem Kingston Express Live received a Grammy and Soul Train nomination. In the summer of 2012, Alexander was also awarded the prestigious German Jazz Trophy, A Life for Jazz. While in November of the same year, he received the Caribbean American Heritage Luminaire Awards, and this from the Institute of Caribbean Studies in Washington, D.C. Alexander remains a, a rigorous touring schedule worldwide, from jazz clubs to concert halls and playing a jazz festival. So there you have it, our celebrity guest today, Jamaican jazz maestro. The icon Monty, welcome back, sir. Good morning, <laughs> you guys good morning, you? Mr. Alexander. How's everything, man? Everything is wonderful, and it was another day in, in, in the life of you, we three. Mm, definitely, mm. definitely. You know, Monty, as soon as as soon as I mentioned your name, I got a text from a Jamaica college old boy oh. talk, talking about big up all JC old boy. What's up with these people, Monty? <laughs> Well, Monty, we say Happy New Year and welcome back to Grooving Radio, sir. How are you? Very glad to be with you this morning. And, uh, man, I was listening to all the news just now you're talking about, especially people in our entertainment scene. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I was very, very glad to catch up a little bit yes, with yes. what's going on mm -hmm. on the rock of things pertaining to the rock. Yes, definitely, mm. definitely. Well, anyway, Monte, uh, last week uh, when we got the news of the passing of Natalie Cole, uh, you know, we said that, you know, we here at Groovin Radio, we like to let people know that we have some great people amongst us. And, and y you know, the journey of a Monte Alexander, it has taken you all over the world. It has taken you into different places where some of us will dream 
that we can, you know, we could ever be. You know, I remember coming to one of your events at Lincoln Center, uh, meeting Tony Bennett for the first time, up close and personal. And, and you have worked with some great people. For those who don't know much about Monty Alexander, I want you to just refresh their memory, Monty, from the days on Mountain View Avenue and all those days. Just tell us a little more again about Monty uh, coming up in this business. Huh? Well, I look back at my uh, story and I can't quite fathom how come why, how, what you know, just uh, a blur to me because I would never have imagined mm -hmm. that it was possible to uh, be all over the place like, like that, you know mm -hmm. and all I can attribute to well, to several items my own love and passion mm -hmm. for this thing called music mm -hmm. and people because the music is important, but the more important than that is the people making the music. Mm -hmm. So from a very young age, I just was like a delighted young kid mm -hmm. in the candy store, you know, <laughs> the sweetie, you yes. know, that we were all, as a child, you want to eat that candy and that candy. To me, it was a big, wonderful world of of possibilities. So from a very early age, coming up from Mountain View, mm -hmm. I... Um, because there was an old piano in the home, mm -hmm. and I gravitated towards it. Uh, this big piece of wood with those black and white notes, mm -hmm. and I must have been three years old, and I started banging and beating on it, and I must have been smiling from the first first time I did it. And mm -hmm. one thing led to another: start playing a rhythm and playing a melody, and just uh, just because you know it's not unusual for the young young children, right. uh, if the circumstances are good around mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. to gravitate towards an in a musical instrument. So mm -hmm. that happened to me from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And I was blessed to have a home where the, the folks, well, the way they were, and um, playing music on the record player all day long and mm -hmm. listening to what was then our only radio station, RJR, mm -hmm. <laughs> <and> Rediffusion, <laughs> Rediffusion. Right. Right. And that was, a, you used to buy the little box, from, and it would play that uh, music, you know, coming right through this special system. So you heard music all the time and coming from U.S. So uh, I could go on and on, but it started just because of, um, call it uh, my original, I call it like an incubation. Yes, yes. When you're in the right set of circumstances mm -hmm. and uh, you have this handed to you by destiny, God's will. Yeah. Here you are, young Monty, there's the piano over there, and uh -huh. I start playing it. And, and the other thing that happened from even five, six years old, the, the family friends and the people from down the neighborhood say, Monty, play the piano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I became the entertainer from yes. when I was very, very young. And yes, I saw yes. this tremendous thing called how you make contact with people. Even if you're an awkward child, mm -hmm. you don't know what to hope make a sensible conversation mm -hmm. you sit there and you play the piano and, and something can come out of you right. and people's attitudes could mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you from, know from wanting to have a, a, a quarrel of some kind next thing you know everybody dancing and right power of music <laughs> the power so of yes yes that's the power of music yes you know, and then uh, but the, the long long story mm -hmm. i would wear you out <laughs> <laughs> but the, the brief and short story is uh, just one amazing journey because mm -hmm. for me it was the joy the joy of doing it right. and the gift that I had where even though it looked like a bad thing, mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to listen to a music teacher. Right. I didn't want to do any of those disciplinary things because I had that spirit of rebellion from you a very young age. You just wanted to play music. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm and I'm a musician because those guys who were older than I was, I didn't really go out of my way to hang out with guys my age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, with respect to all the guys my age, you know, right. when you eight years old, 12 years old, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my real joy was just, as we used to say, teeth out of school mm -hmm. and go down to where I could be with um, my heroes, which mm -hmm. were, mm -hmm. and I'll mention some Jamaican names that are so revered now, you know, mm -hmm. Roland Alfonso. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had the honor and pleasure of being around and playing piano with the Dan Drummond mm -hmm. and then Tommy McCook. Yes. And mm -hmm one of my greatest heroes to this day, my friend Ernest Ranglin, mm. and our musicians of Jamaica, you know, so, so the combination of hearing this music and the fact that I had an ear, mm -hmm. when we say an ear, you're not 
I didn't to this day mm -hmm. I never really learned my music because of school. Right. Just by being there and soaking up that good vibration mm -hmm. with those guys who welcomed me and said, Yeah Monty, come on, play a little piano because I didn't I didn't mess them up. I right. was able to keep up and not only that but take it, you know. So y I was confident as a youngster right. that I could do this thing called make music and be a part of when you see the environment change around you because of music. This is before the, it seems like yesterday, but this is before our music from Jamaica became such a, an important thing all over the world. Mm -hmm. you know, they hadn't left the shores yet. Yes. We had, the, you know, Calypso music and we call it Mento, our mm -hmm. original folk music. Mm -hmm. And it found its way into this recording studio because of um, Mr. Dodd, Toxin Dodd and, right. and Duke Reed and Ken Curry. And I was there during mm -hmm. that whole time. And people always say, Mont, you should write a book. Mm -hmm. I'd say you should, you should, Monty. And uh, but it, it, for me, though, to sit on for two minutes to tell the story. <laughs> <is hard. laughs> well, you know, before you ask a question, Birdman, mm -hmm. and, and I want to tell you, Monty, how we got back to this interview this morning. For the last couple of weeks, I, I, I'm going to tell you about three guests that we had on this program that really rings loud. Producer Willie Lindo. Uh, for the last two weeks, we had Willie Lindo. Before that, we had Frankie Campbell. We had Lester Sterling, an original member of the Scatterlights. I remember him well. And, and, and you know, Monty, Anthony always say this to me, that there are some people in the background of the music that, are contrib that have contributed a whole lot to people's career. And Monty Alexander is one of those persons, Bert, uh, Birdman. Yes. And Anthony. Uh, Monty Alexander have played with some of the greats. And when I say with some of the greats, we're going to get to that point. But the reason why we're here is, again, because of your contribution. Key thing you just said. You were on those pianos long before Jamaica music is what it is today. Mm -hmm. Jamaica music had not left the shores of Jamaica yet. And a Monty Alexander... A key part of the ingredients was there. Your question, Breadman. Yeah, my qu good morning, Mr. Alexander. And good morning to you, sir. I'm good, I'm good. Um, my question to you is, at that time, when that young age when you started teaching yourself the piano, what type of music were you subjected to at that time? What type of music was in your atmosphere? You, and here is the, another wonderful uh, story. Mm -hmm. I heard all music. Mm. I mean, A-L-L, -L, mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. mm. It wasn't this type, this style. It was... It was, um, maybe that's a part of why I have a certain versatility to this day, because mm -hmm. when I tell people this next thing, they don't believe me. Mm -hmm. I do not read music. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how really? to read music. I don't. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I had some early piano lessons, but I was such a re rebellious spirit. <laughs> that when the teacher said, all right, Alexander, this, that, the other, from the moment she said that, I, I, would, I would, as we used to say, kiss me teeth. Say, kiss me <laughs> I don't want to do that, you know, because I was already playing my own melody, my mm -hmm. own thing. I was making myself happy, just mm -hmm. beating out a rhythm and playing a little song here and there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the combination of me being a self-willed, un un slightly unruly child <laughs> and listening to the radio, all kinds of music from, and I tell you, our local Calypso music, I mean, I, I knew all the... Um, the standard mental songs. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I lived and breathed to be with one of those mental bands playing at at some you know event going on either at a, a hotel mm -hmm. where you know the tourists would be sitting around and the calypso band is playing. Mm -hmm. I would do that. You know, I had an accordion. I could play with them, and I, you know, and when you have other older people around you patting you on the back, so yeah, man, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Your confidence right. is soars to the heavens because. You're not um, doing anything that's on a piece of paper. You're just making music coming mm -hmm. out of the air. Mm -hmm. And your confidence soars to the point where when you play a particular note on the piano, you're not just playing a note. Mm -hmm. You're playing yourself, your mm -hmm. humanity, your, your very existence is, is in the note that you're playing on the piano. So you're making a statement that's not just a little note on the piano. You're, mm -hmm. you're expressing your life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I heard on the radio all that rhythm and blues coming mm -hmm. from... New Orleans and Miami, Florida. We had the radio. You could pick up uh, W I N Z. I remember they used to say W I N Z. We say, <laughs> and then coming out of New Orleans, I was listening right under my ear. This Fats Domino, Little Richard. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing early Ray Charles. I'm hearing and the artists mm. that I remember sitting around with Coxon. 
mm-hmm. and Roland Alphonse and they're talking about a guy named Roscoe Garden who mm-hmm. beat out that blues every human human being shake their booty mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you hear it R&B then sometimes they turn on and you hear the classical music uh, you hear uh, Tchaikovsky and you hear Chopin and you hear this <clears throat> so I'm getting the classical how to make the piano sing not just right, play the notes right, make the right. piano touch you caress you know soul. Y- you know Monty it, it's funny you say that you make the piano sings because the last time I saw you in action was with Ernie uh, er, your good friend Ernie Ranglin and 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 the youngster out of Jamaica Chronics and I, I, I tell you when you talk about making the piano sing Breadman, this man make the piano sing talk and walk mm-hmm. just like oh when Ernie Ranglin blow that um uh, you call it thing in blue, won't it? Uh, I mean... Oh, you mean the musical instrument? Yes. It would be me playing the melodica. Yeah. I'm telling you, the, the Bre- Breadman, these guys make instruments talk mm. and walk. Listen to this. Listen to the work of Monty Alexander on Exodus. Just listen to this one. Exodus. The legendary. The icon. And we don't use those words loosely around here because it is true. He is a part of our history. Monty Alexander. Take a listen. Monty, the journey must be an interesting journey for you because every time I talk to you, I can I, I cannot resist asking you about some of the greats that you've played with when you came to the United States. And for those who don't know Monty, just name some of those great people that you've worked and played with, sir. I tell you. Starting in Jamaica, mm-hmm. mm, my family, my father knew the promoter <clears throat> at the Carib- that would put on those shows at the Carib Theatre mm-hmm. and invite these artists from America that I hear some of them on the radio. I couldn't wait to go to whether whether it was the Carib or the Palace or mm-hmm. Gaiety or Rialto Theatre. These are the old time theatres. Uh, and I got to see Sam Cooke. I got to see Jackie Wilson. Mm-hmm. I got to see uh, on, on the stage uh, uh, Brooke Benton. And in the jazz way, I discovered the music of the man that remains my greatest inspiration today. And I mean, Louis Armstrong, mm. I saw Satchmo on mm-hmm. the stage. I saw Nat King Cole. Mm-hmm. And I've met some of these great men. And um, one set of circumstances led to another when my mother said, we're moving to Miami, Florida. She had some friends and she was kind of in a stage of her life where she wanted to be in America. And we came to Miami. And while I was in Miami, I would go wherever the music was, the entertainers would come. And that was in 1961. So I had this fascination with people who were uh, important in their field, especially music. But it was mm-hmm. entertainment. Mm-hmm. And I just fell in love with that whole world. When I saw that uh, particular performer was at the Fountain Blue Hotel or the Eden Rock Hotel, this is at Miami Beach, mm-hmm. I would be trying to find a way to go see them perform and you know, I, I I just was fascinated with entertainers, mm-hmm. and uh, one thing I started meeting these people. One night when I was playing in uh, Miami at a club, mm-hmm. and it all happened through with some people say serendipity, mm-hmm. because I happened to be sitting in when I was still about seventeen, right near where I lived on Miami mm-hmm. uh, Beach at the time. I would go sit in in, in this little nightclub, but it was almost like a burlesque place, you know, the. Mm-hmm. the um, Strip joint, we used to call it, you know, and there was a band playing there, and I'd go in there and sit in, and there was a booking agent that saw me. He said, so where are you from? I said, Jamaica. Them days, some people never even know Jamaica. Where's Jamaica? Where's Jamaica? I said, no, man, not Long Island. Jamaica, <laughs> the, best, that one, the rock. And next thing you know, got hired to play in these places, mm-hmm. and while I'm there, one night I was playing in a club. Mm-hmm. This is 1962. Now, I'm already playing all over Miami with a little combo in mm-hmm. the bars mm-hmm. where you would see the late night crowd and sometimes literally the gangster people would be in there. Literally the, the night ladies, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, mm-hmm. all these kind of situations. And I'm playing there. Uh, one night, Frank Sinatra and his friends came in and they saw me playing. And some, I guess I was hitting it, hitting the right notes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But they came to me and they said, hey kid, you swing in, we dig how you play, you should be playing in New York. Mm-hmm. So mind you, I'm already in Miami. I figured this is the apex, the climax of of opportunity here. The little boy just came from Jamaica a year before. Here I am uh-huh. with all these hot You don't see any Jamaican people. No, no, nobody from home, no, really. I mean, this scene you now with the hipsters, and by the way, the drug thing is big time. Everybody's sniffing the cocaine, mm. smoking the reefer, the whole thing. And 
my influence from my parents, my mother says, stay away from that, stay away from that, because mm-hmm. I was very happy. So, mm-hmm, the grace mm-hmm. of God, I didn't fall into the drug world, right, you know, because right. that stuff is death. You know? Good, good, good. And and while I was there, um, I started meeting these people and and jamming, and they'd come in, and I have to accompany them, you know, where they want to go up and sing a, a great song. I'm up there playing piano with them because my ears, I knew what to do. So mm. this was my confidence working for me where I could play as I did and accompany Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. Wow. A times. Yes, I did. Wow. And that was the man, the king of kings in the music business. Yes, you know? yes. Then again, I'm meeting um, uh, the jazz man. You know? mm. There was Dizzy Gillespie. I met him way in the early 60s. Then I, I you know, I, one thing led to another, I come to over to Vegas. I'm 18 years old playing in Vegas and I see Sinatra and his friends again and they say, hey kid, you again? (laughs) (laughs) And the next thing you know, I was sent an airline ticket Mm -hmm. and this was in the spring of 1962 Mm -hmm. and just a few days later, there I am on 52nd Street right off 8th Avenue playing at a place called Jilly's. Wow, wow. Like I said, for three years off and on, I'm playing at Jilly's, just piano bar. Mm-hmm. They had music. It was about 60 people, maximum capacity in this club. But mm-hmm. inside that place, you'd say all the biggest, biggest names in American mm. show business. You know, it, it, it's funny, Monty, because, you know, this... Anthony, you there? Yeah, man, I'm here. You, you know, just listening to Monty speak, Anthony, and thinking about what we've been talking about off mic for a minute here. Uh, you, you know, just think about having a Monty Alexander because he has played in venues that, again, some of us uh, dream to mm-hmm. be a part of Anthony. Uh, you know, not often times we do go to Lincoln Center and, 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 and you know, to have a Monty Alexander being presented in our community, this great musician, Anthony. Just think about having a Monty Alexander up close and personal where people can get to see and feel this, this great icon who has played with some of the greatest musicians in the world. You know, uh, uh, and and some people don't even know this Redman. Yes, and just listening the to history, just listening to Monty's story, just made me realize the type of person that he is. That you you you're one of the pre- people in this world that's been fortunate to find your purpose at such an early age. Is he sure he's a Jamaican? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't take one iota of <laughs> that what you just said. Take it for granted. I don't take it for mm-hmm. granted because mm-hmm. for me. It's like I'm two people. One of them is just watching this guy named Monty. So right. Mm-hmm. right. Where you going with now? Where you going? <laughs> <laughs> because I am as I'm a Jamaican bri- bri- raised up with mm. whatever all those vibrations were, all those important things we heard. You know, little mm-hmm. children gone to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. And you hear this thing about the right way, the wrong way, and, and you have to make those choices from mm-hmm. you're young. Mm-hmm. And, and I got this blessing to, to try, always try. Try to make, I don't say I did, but right. try to make those right choices. And mm-hmm. that's what we have every day, you know, mm-hmm. everyone, okay, all well, you get in life, you have to make, try to make the right choices. And yes. most of my choices were good ones because Seems. I was always um, smitten with this thing about stay humble, stay mm-hmm. humble, because the bra- go on bragging, beating your chest that I did this, I did that, it's mm-hmm. not, that's not how it goes. Because yes. It's a gift. And I found what? out that what we all do, especially when it's something that, that leaps out at you mm-hmm. it's really a gift mm-hmm. and it's up to how to how to to nurture the gift and don't abuse it because it's a precious precious thing and yes. I, I must have realized that from a, an early age you know and i just the combination of that kind of thinking mm-hmm. as well as the the ability to make a song on the piano or sing the song you know and the beautiful thing of the camaraderie you would experience yes in the family of musicians who mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who did go went along and did the, a fair measure of foolishness but mm-hmm. main time they had this respect for one another mm-hmm. so that was my engine you know to keep going and doing it and as i met the great great musicians and, mm-hmm. and that i ended up on the on the stage playing and along with these men mm-hmm. i myself couldn't believe it you know right, so I said, right. what wouldn't believe it tonight I'm, i go to my mother i said mom you ever hear about miles davis she <laughs> said no who's, what is miles <laughs> davis she said, miles is this guy plays trumpet yes yes you get a goose bump before yeah, you know yeah, what to say yeah. i get to start hanging out with miles i, I met miles at Jilly's, and miles right. they come up to me and say we learn to play this. I said, mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you know, 
Monty, my experience of 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 uh, of being around a Tony Bennett or a Brentford Marcellus is because of you. Uh, and and I remember all those gigs we used to attend down at Lincoln Center uh, with the legendary our good friend Cedric M. Brooks and all those Legend, guys, the Courtney Pantans and everybody, and 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 just being in that in that room and, and experiencing history experiencing a part of our culture anthony boy how could i do this interview this morning without playing another monty alexander <laughs> called africa unite yeah, monty alexander <laughs> i am still i am calm in this moment i draw my wisdom from my past allowing the future to shape itself around me and so can you you are indeed special Monty it's incredible that someone so unforgettable thinks that I am unforgettable Natalie Cole gone at the age of 65 You know, Monty, you worked closely with Natalie Cole on this project. Yes, sir. I want you to tell us your experience with Natalie Cole. I would, I would very gladly do it, and sadly, sadly and gladly. Mm -hmm. I was, um, it goes back to her father. Because mm -hmm. when I was a kid, one of the things that would happen musically in our home, mm -hmm. we had a lot of the recordings of Nat King Cole, my mother and father, mm -hmm. and we'd be playing these records, and that's how I heard American songs being sung to the max. I mm -hmm. mean, you heard the hit songs of of Nat, mm -hmm. Unforgettable, mm -hmm. uh, Mona Lisa, all these songs. Mm -hmm. I became familiar very, very, very closely with his music, and I would go around imitating him from I was like 10 years old, mm -hmm. even younger. Mm -hmm. And he came. Where did he come? He came to the Carib Theatre in Kingston, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. and I went, I got out of school early, and I went to the concert. My mother had got a ticket. She, she was sitting there in the theatre, and I went, and I caught the last three songs, and I saw this elegant, beautiful human being mm -hmm. sitting at the piano, entertaining the audience with that, those tones, those golden tones mm -hmm. coming from his voice and uh just Nat became my hero he and louis armstrong mm -hmm. and um came to america and i i stayed close to his music the, mm -hmm. the gift that he gave and as far as his wonderful and beautiful daughter mm -hmm. natalie mm -hmm. yes indeed she made uh, a wonderful series of recordings where she trying to make her own statement mm -hmm. which is an understandable thing when you're the child of a of a genius like and that was, mm -hmm. and she started recording, but absolutely in her own idiom as a young woman in the 70s. She went to the rhythm and blues side because Aretha mm -hmm. and Paddy LaBelle and the people you, you're talking about, those were her um, peers. Mm -hmm. And indeed, she made those great recordings, great recordings. But lurking back in her spirit mm -hmm. was this thing called my father, my father, mm -hmm. what his mm -hmm. music was. I mean, there was nothing like Nat King Cole's music. Mm -hmm. So somebody, record company executive said, you know, it's time you did a recording dedicated to your dad. Mm -hmm. And they needed to have some music person who would be familiar with the songs of his of her dad mm -hmm. and it turns out that Monty Alexander was wow. one of those people because they were looking for a pianist to work with her and I, I got a phone call for, from, a, from her manager mm -hmm. he said we heard that you, you were familiar with Nat King Coase I said well so much so that I've done programs like tributes to her to her dad you know and I said well Natalie Cole wants to do a record uh, in tribute to her da her father, mm -hmm. I said I'd be so honored. I'd be so thrilled. I was wow. actually I jumped, I jumped in my shoes. <laughs> I, said, I gotta go, go do this thing. Right. And it was during the Persian Gulf War. If mm -hmm. you remember, it was like ninety one, yes. ninety yes. yes. one. And um, I went out to L A. Mm -hmm. and I met this beautiful woman with those green eyes. Man, mm -hmm. I think I ended up with a crush on on that. <laughs> She's so beautiful, and she was friends with my. I don't know how much you know about her, but my sister-in-law was Phyllis Hyman, mm -hmm. great singer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Phyllis mm-hmm. Simon, oh, Phyllis and Natalie were that. friends, and I and I mm-hmm. knew her first through that mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went to her house. I met her and her husband at the time, mm-hmm. my name Andre Fisher, mm-hmm. and uh, it was such a thrill. I went through like about twenty five songs that she wanted to re exam re- revisit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew these songs like the back of my hand, and I was all mm-hmm. my ear playing mm-hmm. them, and I would create a revisit to to what Nat King Cole had done with his trio and mm-hmm. went through all these songs and I was I would say my participation brought her closer back to her dad because mm-hmm. she had moved away from the music you know she was mm-hmm. deep mm-hmm. in the rhythm and blues stuff mm-hmm. and I just remember being around her and the music and I couldn't believe it it was like this thing we were talking about you mean from all the way from Jamaica and here you are with your hero's daughter and um, I was rehearsing we recorded and on several selections i'm playing piano Mm -hmm. and um this recording became a sensation Mm -hmm. and uh millions and millions sold Mm -hmm. and after a few months had gone by i got this thing in the mail i'm looking at it on the wall right here in my apartment (laughs) Mm -hmm. and it's a, a platinum record Wow! That you sent to me. Natalie sent me this record, and um, it was a wonderful gift. Yes, a memento. Mm-hmm. She wrote a mm-hmm. book about her um, life and her challenges, mm-hmm. and how she miraculously came out of that yes. terrible thing. Mm-hmm. But it had mm-hmm. done damage to her. Yes, brought yeah. up her body. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what. That's what those things had yes. done. And yes. Um, yes. later on, her kidneys. Fear. struggled mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. function mm-hmm. as they should, you know. Mm-hmm. So I felt a real proximity, a closeness to her away from the singing mm-hmm. star, mm-hmm. a sweet, sweet spirit. Mm-hmm. And when she, I don't know what it was, five years ago, had to have a, I'm not sure what, when, had a to kidney, have a, a, kidney a, transplant. a kidney transplant. Yeah, right. Yes, she yes. had to have a transplant. And mm-hmm. when I saw her, she had lost all that weight. And yes. I said, my God, this woman has a, has a, and she got involved with a church in mm-hmm. L.A., mm-hmm. At one of those churches where a lot of celebrities, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smokey Robinson would be, you know, all these other people would be there. And so she, I saw her mm-hmm. <clears throat> really getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, when I heard two weeks ago, I was up in Maine, mm-hmm. and it came across on the, well, actually it was on the, on the Internet, mm-hmm. um, at the pullover mm-hmm. on the road, you know, mm-hmm. pullover and stuff. And mem- mem- I mean, I'm... You know, just share with you the yes. thoughts that come to me. Yes, yes. But yes. Natalie Cole was um, just a beautiful, beautiful lady. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sang those that that little girl quality. When you hear her voice, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you hear something like she's still a little girl. You know, just mm-hmm. a child singing mm-hmm. with that innocent, sweet sound. Mm-hmm. And uh, boy, she could wail. I mean, she <laughs> she take you right to the screaming and hollering with that mm-hmm. when she start. You know, singing especially R and B. I don't know, I could go on and on, but the main thing is I had the great pleasure yes. of being yeah. around her and the process of, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. how to honor your father. And right. it was done with such good taste. Definitely. And, Definitely. you know, that's that's something to be proud of. And mm-hmm. I indeed mm-hmm. was there. And, you know, I tell you, she made friends with, guess what? A place called Jamaica. Ah. Oh, she became wow. very, very <laughs> fond of Jamaica, Jamaicans. Yeah. And I think, and if, from what I, she told me, she had mm-hmm. made I can't remember the, the the individual's names, but a few people mm-hmm. that she became like almost like sister with mm-hmm. with them mm-hmm. that are in Jamaica. That she had gone down there to perform at one of the festivals. And and blue. She met people and she just fell in love. She'd go down there for a holiday, nothing right. to do with with a concert or anything right. like that. And anyhow, yeah. Natalie's. Uh, just uh, sad loss and y- y- you know Monty uh, we, we felt that we had to do this this morning uh, t- to let people know even in the greatness of a Natalie Cole uh, you know there is a Jamaican and, and, and a Jamaican who have contributed a whole it's lot to, country, yeah. Yeah, to, to, to the music and you know all these ideas as we share ideas Anthony and myself and Chris and Andrea in producing this program Monty is that one of the things that we always say is that we will uh we must highlight we must highlight the work of our own and and you know i am happy we knew of the natalie story with you but i don't think a lot of our audience really know how intimate Mm -hmm. and 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 how personal this is i mean you now can look at a platinum album Mm -hmm. in in your house uh that you have worked on with one of the 
This album also won many Grammys. Also, oh, yes. Yes. Grammys. Six, well, and six what it, Grammys. What it, what it was for that big, large audience that mm -hmm. are about Grammys, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it reintroduced to the young people of that time. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, was that 20 years ago, mm -hmm. or 25 years ago? Mm -hmm. It re reintroduced a lot of young people mm -hmm. to this incredible thing called the Great American Songs, the yes. songs of um, uh, uh, Gershwin mm -hmm. and Cole Porter and Irving Berlin. These are the songs that Sinatra sang, that mm -hmm. Louis Armstrong sang, mm -hmm. that Ella Fitzgerald sang, that Nat King Cole sang, that right. Bing Crosby sang. Right. Those icons of our music, right. they were choosing to record songs that come from what we call the Great American Songbook, and mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. Natalie did. And when that recording became the million seller that it did, right. people were introduced, young people of the time, yes. who are 20 years older now, they heard this great thing, right. this great music coming from a man named Nat King Cole. That yes. was, he was a miracle. Yes, he is. He was, he he is. was a miracle. And when he those caressing tones, that was the most romantic mm -hmm. sound that anybody could have heard. You know, So Nat, who was my hero on mm -hmm. the piano as well as vocally, his songs, the choice of songs that he gave us, right. um, she reintroduced that to the public. Consequently, right. when people heard Tony Bennett mm -hmm. uh, making some of these recordings, because Tony, I remember being a kid in Jamaica, I told Tony, who I've become, I become quite friendly with, I know him mm -hmm. quite well personally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, my mother was going around singing Tony Bennett songs in the early 50s. Ah. And he <laughs> reintroduced also the, the beautiful songs. And yes. then by, by the time Tony Bennett started, doing a new series of recordings, young people became taken with his music. Definitely. You know, and, and for me, Sinatra, yeah. mm -hmm. who I'm going to have this incredible opportunity coming up yes. on February the 12th and 13th, where mm -hmm. I'll be doing a big concert in a big major concert hall mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. some incredible guests, yeah. I'm going to recall these years verbally as well as musically yeah. ah. when, I, when I played for Sinatra, ah. because Sinatra <laughs> and Nat King Cole, yeah. they wow. stopped the world. Mm -hmm. Anthony, <laughs> it seems like a monumental event. Yeah, this is this is just great, 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 Monty. Anthony, I want you to put those dates out there. Uh, and uh, you have the information in front of you, Anthony. Go ahead. Uh well, the dates, the the couple dates, January sixteenth. Monty is gonna be at the new school, Kaplan Auditorium. Then on February twelfth and thirteenth, it's jazz at Lincoln Center Rose Hall. When Monty meet Frank Sinatra, Monty mm -hmm. and friends with special guest Kurt England. So these are special deeds that we're encouraging our Jamaicans in the diaspora, everybody listening, to come out and support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Monty, in closing, I, 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 you know, this is a question I want to ask. Uh, it, 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 when I listen to you, I, I can answer the question because I don't think there's any regrets in, in, in Monty uh, choosing music or music choosing Monty. But I want you to respond to it, Monty. When, yeah. you, when you look back at your legendary career, if you had to do it all over again, Monty Alexander, would you do it the same or any change? Gentlemen, I didn't <laughs> do it. It, it, it happened. It happened. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> happened. And uh, when it, it comes and happens to you, mm -hmm. if you just allow it to happen and get out of the way mm -hmm. of those things that would stop you from, mm -hmm. you know, I, I compare it to the people playing football, American football, mm -hmm. when, when, the, when the quarterback hands you the, the ball. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't throw it to the sideline. Go for the touchdown. Mm. And my my whole thing is that when the opportunity comes, I say to myself, "Can I do this? Can I rise to that? Or am I going to make a fool of myself? Whatever." Because mm. my whole my whole thing, at least ninety percent of it, is just um, a, a positive thinking. It's about positive thinking and being being able to fit in and 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 um, that's what I've done pretty much most of the time. Mm. And you get. When the older people say to me, "Hey, kid, you're doing great, man. You're really doing great," you know, <laughs> and I say, "I say, well, I hope, I hope you like it. It's yes. about your confidence becomes." I remember Sinatra looking at me, say, "Hey, kid, you're swinging tonight, kid." <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, sir. And 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 my confidence was was there. So yes, yes. all through my years, when I had doubts mm -hmm. about my ability, I would I would feed. My faith mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. confidence in that mm -hmm. fact. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man from Jamaica. Y they don't know me over yet, so. <laughs> but I am going to play this musical note like right. it's the last oh. note of my life. This mm. note mean is is the most incredible thing you could ever want to do. Right. Play that particular <laughs> note, mm -hmm. and the, the thing about how the, those the music brings humanity together. Mm -hmm. And this is something about me. I just I'm not just a musician. I feel like I'm a catalyst. 
Boy, to Mon- bring people Boy, together, especially Monty, you uh, are, you American are. friends as well as the Americans. You know? you know, you hit the nail on mm. the head right there. Yes, he did. You hit the nail on the head right there. You are more than a musician. You have drawn a lot of us together, Monty. I, I, I'm just going to leave these few words with you. And it really works this morning. I am still. I am calm in this moment. I draw wisdom from my past, allowing the future to shape itself around me. And so can you. I'm going to add, you, add the other one. is The past, yes. The future, yes. But now is the time. The Meaning, presence. Do like you do in Clem. You know, mm-hmm. do do it good right now. Yes, I, I am trying, and it's an honor and a pleasure to talk to you, gentlemen. You are talk about this, that, the other, and I tell you, <laughs> my, my, one of the things I'd like to do mm-hmm. down the road is talk to you mm-hmm. who know about you know how to you know with the media. Mm-hmm. I'm still mm-hmm. like in the woods about the media <laughs> and which button to press on the iPhone. <laughs> and, you know, I'm an old school guy like trying to fit in. My, you know, my wife, she know what button to press. Yes, and all that. So yes. press this button. What, what, what? You are a special person, Monty <laughs> Alexander. We love your brethren. We love you. I because love you back. Yes, you man. Thank so much for inviting me on the show. You're and, uh, you know, still, still strong. You yes. too, Monty. And say, and say hello to your wife. We'll and see you at Lincoln Center, and sir. Have a wonderful, wonderful 2016. I am so knocked out to be able to do that show because it's a very important part of my life. That yes. Folks from Jamaica would never, never have known anything about that because it's so insulated that yes. team. But man, mm-hmm. it was, um, you know, Sinatra was a hundred years this last year, and yes, just, yes. just seen all the celebrations. Well, I was there. Yes, I yes. played at parties for him. I was there. Well, uh, when he was drinking more than most people <laughs> could drink. Well, Monty, <laughs> we're going to leave it there. We're going to see you at Lincoln Center. All As right. Miss Lou would say, what good. Bob and Marley would say, one love. Again, love and respect. Anna Monty Alexander, you're the greatest. Yeah, man. All right, Monty. And, and, and your JC friend, them can't stop text me now, okay? Because <laughs> you don't owe them. And them who are you. <laughs> we owe each other. Take, we owe each other. Yes, man. Take care, Monty Alexander. Thanks That's again, great. sir. Thank right. you very much. Yes, sir. Bread man, make myself your life is not a dead man.